you, Jesus. Brother Akil Salman will come with the morning lesson. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we praise the Lord, everyone? Yeah. Um, our morning's lesson will be taken from Acts 27, reading from verse 1 to 11, and then from 27 to 31. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And, it, and entering into a ship of Adramitium, we launched meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Astristus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, belong with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we all launch from thence, we sail unto Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, Pamphylia we came to Myra, a city of Cilicia. And there the century and found a ship of Alexandra sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed solely many days, and scarce were come over against Sindos, the wind not suffering us, we sailed on, on the century, Crete, sorry, over against Solomon, and heard an early passing it, came in, unto a place where is called the Fair Heaven, Havens. Nigh whereunto was the city of Leisure. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that, the, that this vouch will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the, la the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the Citrian believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. 27. But when the fourteen night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded and found it twenty fathoms, and when they had gone a little further, they sound again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing least we, sh then fearing least we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors on on out to the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were and as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under color, as though they have as though they would have cast anchors out of the four ship. 31. Paul said to the Citrian and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, he cannot be saved. Here ends the portion of God's holy word. Thank you, Jesus. The anchor holds though the ship is battered. The
Jesus. We have to hold on to that anchor. That's why we have to be determined to hold on to the hand. Our theme for today is called to be like Jesus. And the sub theme is abide in the Father's house. Is there never a time we need to abide in the Father's house? Is no. Is no. In this pandemic time, is no. Is no is to be like Jesus. That's the reason why we have to fast. We have to pray. We have to live good. We have to, you see those who don't feel, remember going over by overseas. You can't uncle have passport alone. You have to have visa. So, source of baptism can't save you. You have to search for the Holy Ghost. You have to find the Holy Ghost because it's the spirit that raised Christ from the dead and he's going to call up us to meet Jesus. Amen? Amen. Beloved, beloved, now we are the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. For we know Like it. 
and truth another time to worship him amen it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to praise his name the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run it near him and they are safe let me greet those who are watching by social media let me greet those who are here amen sorry indeed he's a good god those who are visiting today happy to have you in grace and truth worshiping the lord amen we're living in serious times we're living in perilous time. Somebody said, what is to be, must be. And what is for you, you'll get. But today, as we are here, let us turn our eyes up to Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. And the things of hurt will grow strangely dim. Anybody want to go home? And I'm talking about home where Jesus is. This world has become a wilderness. I'm dead serious. This world has nothing left to offer. I 
and we are just living because we are living. But today as we are here, let's fix our minds on him. Knowing is only what he's done for Christ will last. The beautiful writer said, and Mr. Music, I wish if you could just play it once for us. Just a reminder, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And it's a reminder to me, it's a reminder to all of us. Because if the world is turning upside down, we can't go run to America because they are in turmoil. We can't go to no other country on this planet because they are having the same and going through the same situation we are going through. chapter 26 and it came and it shall be when thou art come in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance and possess it and dwell it dwellest therein that thou shalt take of the first of all thy fruit of the herd, which thou shalt bring of thy land, that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall, will put it in a basket, and will go and shall go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to to place his name there. And thou shalt go unto the priest that shall be in those days and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God that I am come unto the country which the Lord swear unto our fathers to give, for to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord God, a, Sumer a, Sumer a Syrian ready to perish was my father 
And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with few and became there a nation great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptian evil entreat us and afflict us and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cry unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord hear us, hear our voice, and look upon our afflictions and our labor and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with and stretched forth harm and with a great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. Father, we thank you for your words. You're already anointed, but God, there's someone standing before you. Nothing in my hands I bring. Frail human being, ah, oh God, uh, I pray even now that you'll cover my heart, my mind, my thoughts. And God, help me to be worthy enough to open these lips and to speak your word. So, mighty God, as I open my mouth to speak to the hearts and minds of your children, God, give me the right mind, the right attitude, and help me to realize, God, as I preach to others, God, if I don't put myself in, I will become a castaway. So, mighty God, help me to save me, and God, help me as I speak to the hearts and minds of your people that they would be so ready to save themselves in Jesus name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Today I want us to quickly look at the God of our fathers. If we pause to look at the God of our fathers we will realize that there are so many wonderful things about the God of our fathers. We will also realize that the God of our fathers have never made a promise that he have never fulfilled. Amen? And I want us to know that about the God of our fathers. The God of our fathers is a covenant keeper. He's a keeper of promises. And no wonder the songwriter, maybe they were thinking about the God of our fathers. And they penned the words of the song and they said, It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his words. Just to rest up on his promise. Just to know, thus saith the Lord. And he believes, the writer of the song believed very much that anything the God of our fathers says that is what he's going to do. And I want us to leave here today with that level of assurance that anything the God of our fathers have promised, that will he do. So the word of God, as we speak, speak to the time when the children of Israel have come out of bondage. And brethren, they, and after you have gone through many things, you will not cease from remembering them. Am I right? Whatever you go through in life many times, you use them as your memorial and you use them to move on. And every time you reach difficult times in your life, you would say, I have been through enough. To know that he's still good enough for me so I can make it. So the children of Israel, they came out of their struggles. And the Lord was now saying to them, after I brought you out of your struggles, you have and give you the land that flows with milk and honey to possess it. You should bear one thing in mind. That whatever you have received from what I have given to you. You should take back some and give it to me. Hello? Hello? Anything I have given to you. And, and, and look at God. Look at God. God would bear a banana 
Is God land? Is God grow the banana tree? Is God do everything to the banana? And all God is asking you, all that I have done, give me one hand. Hello? Just bring back a hand and give it to me and I will bless you immensely. Am I one enough? Am I near it? Am I do everything to it? But I'm begging you, one hand. And this the children of Israel has always done because they realize that the God of our fathers, whatever he promises and whatever he says we ought to do, we ought to do it. So they were now at a junction. Brethren, I thought about this. And as I thought about this, I realized that the people of God at all times, as we journey the path of life, we will encounter difficulties in our lives. And we will, we will now have to understand as we go through life that when we encounter our difficulties, God has already made a promise that I'm going to take you out of it. Hello? I, I, I believe that the Lord... And this week, I don't remember if I was you saying it to Sister Williams or somebody in the house. But as I looked at the difficult times and I think about the church and I think about the communities, I realize that the more difficult times become and the closer that the Lord is, is the less people want to come to church. The less respect they have for the people who minister. They don't count the pastor with a long stick. And, and as I looked at it, brethren, I want us to look at it this morning quickly. I, I looked at it. Could it be that the fullness of the Gentiles is coming in? Could it be the closure for redemption, for salvation for us is closing? And the presence of Almighty God is been removing from the hurt. And because of that, people does not have the mind. And all that we are doing, those who have half mine, mine is now gone. Because persons are coming to church with half mine. And because they are half-heartedness. And the spirit is not pushing them anymore. Because the Lord, if you look at the newspaper this morning, it says they have a quadruple murder in Clarendon this morning. And as we speak, the police are on the scene. Bloodshed is in our world. Bloodshed and bloodshed and, and everything and abortion and everything is coming up to the nostrils of Almighty God. And he can't take it no more. And he's, he's moving away. And because of that, our hearts are now failing us for fear. Because we don't know what is happening. Pestilences and signs and wonders. When I listened to the news this week and they said, Moo is here. And Moo does not even fear the vaccine. I wonder what next. But I'm just wondering, brethren, and I want you to think aloud with me. We are just feeling the presence of a God because we are connected. But the unsaved man who want to come not feeling anything, and he's not feeling anything pulling him either. I remember 19, 
99. When it was coming to the year 2000, the churches could not hold people. Because they said he said he's going to put in his appearance in the year 2000. And as soon as that wears off, the conviction wears off. To the point where people does not even care. They are dying and they don't even care. And the order of the day is R.I.P. R.S.I.P. And that is what is giving the world comfort. R.I.P. and S.I.P. Rest in peace or sleep in peace. But the word of God is fulfilling our years. He said, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after death comes the judgment. You have an appointment to sleep. I don't care how you want to sleep, but after you get up, there's going to be a judgment. The God of our fathers is a God of promise. And he is recognized for that because the word of God says from way back when he spoke to Abraham. He said, I want you to get out of, move away from your families. Move away from your kindred. And I'm going to give you a land. And I'm swear I'm going to make you to be a father of many nations. And the word of God said, I think it was when Abraham was about 90 or 99 years of age. The Lord gave him that promise and said, listen, your seed shall multiply. And Abraham was not resting on the promises of Almighty God. And everything that all the Lord said to you, if you want to see me at work, if you want me to take you out of your situation, ah, just, just obey my voice. Listen to what I say. And if you follow me and keep my commandments, nothing will hurt you. So as we go through what we are going through, let us try to follow the commandments of God. Because he said, I will keep those in perfect peace whose minds is stayed on me. He's the God of my fathers. And whatever he says, I'm going to rest on the promises of Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This world has become a wilderness. What is here to enjoy? If we love the flesh, we, we're going to die sooner or later. If we love to gamble... We're going to die sooner or later. If we have a mansion, we're going to die sooner or later. If we have a lovely vehicle, we're going to die sooner or later. And if we are not saved, what will our answer be? Lord, you know what I used to drive back there? You need to open the door and let me in. You know where I was living back there? You know how much money we spent for my house? God, you know, I wonder if you know. So I have all right to be saved. None of those things will help us at the end of this. It matters so little how much you have owned. The places you have been or the people you have known. God does not see it as anything. 
what God will see is a time when we spend with him. So the writer said there are days I like to be all alone with Christ my Lord. I can tell him of my troubles all alone. I want to be in the presence of God. Now that I can be in the presence of God then. The promise of the God of our fathers still exists. Lord, help me to give up all for your cause. People don't have the mind for church. And you invited them to church. And they ain't coming. And the, the world is asking, where's the church? The church is always here. Preaching water, baptism in the name of Jesus. And the infilling of the Holy Ghost. But the world has always been walking away. And people don't see the need for salvation. They see the need for everything else. Give me a car. And when I come down the road, I'm going to make certain I pull my window down that the nigga them see me. And see, see, I feel my life up, up. Yeah. I think it was this week we were driving and, and Sister Williams was talking to Shane or we were someplace. And, 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 and I think he used the term, big up yourself. And I said, we don't have any pump here. Because that's the only way you can big up yourself if you pump some here or pump something. Because you cannot elevate yourself where you are not. If you're not there, you're not there. So when a man tell you big up yourself, where can you go down where you are at? The only time you can big up yourself is when you have the assurance. You walk with pumps and pride. And this is why people say apostolic people will see. Because we walk with this level of assurance. Some sweet day I'm going to see Jesus. Some sweet day I'm going to be where he is. I'm going to be around the throne of almighty God. So I'm making my reservation for my final destination. So you know what? You walk with this level of assurance. And every time you walk, you walk singing the song. For I've anchored my soul in the heavens of rest. And I sail the wild seas no more. If we are resting on the promises of our God, the God of our fathers, virgin, there is nothing that we should be worrying about. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took the children of Israel out of bondage, out of oppression, and they turned back and they said, thank you, Jesus. Hey, I believe we are in this room today, and all of us maybe need to open our mouth and start thanking Jesus, because through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We are not better than those who have died from the coronavirus. But you know what happened? God is still looking out for us. He's still opening doors. And he's still protecting us. I want to bring my basket in the room this morning. And as I bring my basket in the room this morning, I'm going to step up in the presence of Almighty God and say, God, you have given it to me. And I brought it a little to tell you thank Thank you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for keeping here. Thank you for tender mercies. Thank you for your blood coverage. (laughs) 
so I brought it back, mighty God, to tell you thanks. Woo! You have been better than God to me. Woo! I could have died this week, but God, you saved me. So you know what happened? I bring a little something back, and I want to put it at your feet. You are a God of covenant. You keep promises. And because you're a promise keeper, I'm keeping my, the end of my bargain. Woo! To give you praise, to give you honor, and to give you what deserves to your name. He's the God of our fathers. He never fails. He never changes. He's always busy. We were on the road this week and we were praying about something for Shandain. And out of the blues, he got a phone call and the person was saying to him, you know that something, 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 something. And the person was just giving him something. He will give you the testimony one day. And as the person said it to him, I heard him. And let me tell you something, brethren. When you trust Jesus, nobody can stop you. I, I heard him start saying, as he had the phone over here, he said, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. But you just keep working, Jesus. Can I say to somebody, he's the God of our fathers. And he's always working for us. Our God Almighty, when we pray to him, when we don't see See it, he's working. Woo. Woo. He's a God of our fathers. The word of God says Daniel kept on praying. Daniel was taken from, from Judah. He would shed Machmisha and Abednego, and they were taken into Babylon. But you know what happened? Daniel was praying to the gods of our fathers. And somebody never, never like it. And they, they make a decree for you to shut the door. But you know what happened? Shut the door. There's a decree out for the church to shut up. There's a decree out. Nobody should be in church save those who are as so damn streaming. Ah, oh, God Almighty. But you know what happened? Somebody believe that, listen, ah, oh, God, we are not in the stream. Ah, oh, God Almighty. You know what happened? I might not be in the stream, but I still have a praise. And somebody decide to praise God. Daniel opened the door. And when Daniel opened the door, he started praying. And somebody said, throw him in the lion's den. And when they threw him in the lion's den, the God of our fathers stepped over in the lion's den and he said Daniel no hurt will be done to you because in spite of what was happening in your life you still have a praise can I say to somebody let's not dwell on the situation let us praise him Moo might be here, Delta might be here, and the virus Corona might be here, but Church of Almighty God, let us keep on praising. Ah, God Almighty, let us keep on praising. Ah, God, whatever the situation, we still have a praise. He's the God. Our forefathers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, even if God does not deliver us, he's still God. We are losing some of our wonderful pastors by Corona. But, and, and, and some of two of them have died so far. Uh, Pastor Mitchell died this week and Pastor Hines died. And, and, and brethren, you know what happened? If God does not come through, he's still God. If, he, if, he, if, he, if you have to die, he's going to be still God. 
Can I say to the church? If some situation come upon you and you're lying on your bed and you see death coming up the road, God is still God. Start praising him because you are going to a better place. Start worshiping God. Don't feel funny and say to God, I will you go kill me for you no good. No, go on before because God know what is, is behind. When somebody shout out to Paul and say, where are you going, Paul? Paul said, I'm going to Jerusalem. And they said, they're going to kill you down there. Paul said, I have a word for, word for you. For me to live is Christ and to die is great gain. This church have a hope, one that we cherish not in vain. Oh, God Almighty, the God of our fathers walk up and he want to give the people who are worrying a level of assurance. He said, you might be worrying now, but I have news for you. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Job wife was rowing and he turned around to her and he said, after my skin worm destroyed this body, yet with my eyes shall I see God whom I shall see for myself and my eyes shall behold and not another. What are you worrying about? Let us leave with a level of assurance. We serve the God our forefathers. I serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I serve the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Elijah, the God of Jeremiah, the God of Ezekiel. Hey, and if we serve the God of our fathers, our God is giving me a promise right now in my head. He said, nothing good will I withhold from them that walk uprightly. If every time the situation worsens, you come to God and you say, God, I bring a little for you. All, one woman said, all I have is a little praise. And somebody said, where that she bring coming at the basket? Eh? This a strip she never threw nothing. But all she had was a little praise. And she came and she stood before it and I said, you're a wonderful Jesus. You're a great God. You take my soul from sin. And I said, but she never put nothing in there. Why she never sit down? And when Jesus realized that all she had to it was a little praise. He said, I want to look in the basket. She gave more than all. She's a praiser. And the word said, God inhabits the praises of his people. Brethren, don't be daunted of what is going on. Listen, when you find make the time for Jesus, he's going to make some time for you. Something just hit me. The word of God says... The children of Israel were going through a turmoil. They were not even free to walk. Because the Midianites was up, up on them. If they were eating, Sister Ashley, and the Midianites come, they would take away their food. So there was this one Gideon who was hiding while he was preparing something to eat. When the angel of the Lord spoke to him, and I won't cut it short, and said, you're a mighty man of valor, and he could not believe. Because in his mind, he, he, was, he was resenting everything that was happening around him. They were dear, but he was fighting against them in his mind. You see, the mind is powerful in a brethren. 
Learn to fight your battles in your mind. It's not the whole upon nice you make. Fight your battles in your mind. He was saying to the God of his father, where is the God of our fathers? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac that I heard about. And the miracles that he have done, put in Red Sea, one side and one side, and they cross over. Where is he? And he was fighting his battle in his mind. And the Lord saw it and walked over and said, you're a mighty man of valor. And I want you to choose an army. And I'm cutting short. And he get two, 32,000 men. But as he got 32,000 men, he said, the fearful and the unbelieving. If you are here and you are fearful and you are unbelieving, go on home. And the Bible said 10,000 went home. What am I saying to this church today? And the Lord tell him to give them a test. And look on who prepared for the long haul. And the word of God said when he finished. How much he had? 300. From 32,000. There are some persons coming here every Sunday to make up the 20. You know what happened? The fearful is at home. I don't want to go out there and catch it at church, but you're going to work. I don't, a church that follows the protocols, I don't want to go and catch it there, but you go and sit in the taxi and four of you in the back and the, the, the driver not taxing you. If you don't want to be the fourth one, get out. And you sit down because you want to go about your business. But people become fearful to, 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 to come with, 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 a, with a praise. Stay warm. Because when the reward of praise comes, he's going to reward those who are praising. He's our God. And he will never put more on us than we can bear. And brethren, if it's time for the fullness of the Gentile to come in, sister, sister, get the Holy Ghost. Do. When pray your feet like nobody business this week. Because you know what happened? If the fullness of the Gentile come in and nobody can't receive the Holy Ghost anymore. Who not have it? And who have it and dash it away? Now go can feel the presence of God. What a trouble it's going to be. Marco Shatakasa. It is going to be weeping and wailing because some people is going to lift their hand and said, I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you said from now till tomorrow morning and you don't feel nothing. The Lord said, your time is up. I want to keep my hand, the hand of my bargain. I'm saying to somebody else, keep the hand of your bargain. Keep the hand of your bargain. Though billows roll, the song says he's going to keep my soul. My heavenly father's watch is over me. So you know what? I'm going to rest in the hand of almighty God. Can I say to this wonderful group of persons, let us keep our minds focused on him. Let us keep our hearts centered 
around him. And brethren, don't be afraid to die. Because if God takes us out, he's taking us away from something. Maybe he realized that you can't manage the next level of the test. And, and I don't want you. And, and, and this is why the word fulfilling our ears. You know, it just dropped in my spirit. He's going to shorten the days. It, it, for the elect's sake. You know, and sometimes it could not. It, it, it might not be the days per se days. But our days and hurt. Just to save us. Because the next round of the test, if he see that you can't manage, him say, come. And said, Jesus, I went catch Corona from and dead. Go, go along. Go and see if you're lucky, say so you get it and see him. I wish we knew this song. We would sing it. Be not dismay, what ear betides, God will take care of you. Through every day, along the way, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. I don't have any shadow of a doubt. He's a God of my fathers. Mr. Music. Uh, I want somebody to leave this room this afternoon knowing that whatever happens, I'm in the hands of Almighty God. Whatever happens, I'm protected by the power of Almighty God. He's the God of my fathers. system for us.
God will take care of you. Let's track the words. I'm going to be asking them to come. 